contrary to the will of the people. There's nobody's responsibility other than the people to deal with a rogue government. The rogue government is the Rouge government, as in the Mulan Rouge, as in the old New Orleans red light district. Moulin Rouge, right? Red House, we talking Republican Party, the elephant, symbol of the matriarchy. To Noble Juali, to remember, the elephant is our friend, but nobody trusts a jackass because they're going to do some foolish stuff that's going to cause problems for other than itself. And sometimes it does this to its own detriment. <clears throat> and so we heard about Iran Contra. We know that it was about Contras in Nicaragua going to war with a government being backed by strong man Manuel Noriega and a bid to establish a governmental coup to overthrow the Nicaragua regime that was belligerent and oppressive to the people, the same as the government of America is belligerent and oppressive to the people. Now, remember, the Iran-Contra affair, the President of the United States, the Vice President of the United States, and a couple of the Joint Chiefs of Staff all got caught red-handed. That's the red hand over the native mouth of the indigenous woman they represent the ones with the dirty hand that tried to silence the mouth of the organic aboriginal women of the land. The tribes remind us by painting over their mouth the hand that is the dirty hand. The blood is on the hand of the one who covered the mouth of the tribal mothers. And when they suffocated the voice of the matriarchy, mm -hmm. they left a trail of tears in their wake. And in the trail of tears, they rolled out the dolls. Let that sink in. They rolled out the dolls, as in Dominique dolls, the gymnasts, because they was flipping us out and flipping somebody else in, using paperwork as a means of altering the identification of the tribes of the land, the clans, the cliques, the families the gangs, the outlaws. And so the codes come in in pop culture for the ones that know the tribal traditions to read the culture, point out the significant event to the clans. Then they remember, oh, snap, it's the Treaty of the Hat. Why we didn't know that it was the Treaty of the Hat and the Secret Society reenactment of the KKK mm -hmm. versus the Omegas. The Omega is the Great Mother and the symbol for Omega looks like an upside down horseshoe, but what it really is is an open wound. 
because the mother is bearing a child called an alpha. <clears throat> so the alpha comes forth and proceeds from the omega. That means the end was already present before the beginning was born. And this is how you got the alpha male from the omega mother. Because the self-created God is a metaphor for the God that was created by the great mother without the aid of a man as told in the holy drama, the part about the prince, Heru, who's rising to power to confront his uncle, Set. That's Lord Set. Set. E-N is Lord in the ancient tongue of the Middle East. So set in or say in is Lord set the rogue uncle, which is the rouge uncle, which is the red uncle. And Noble Ali said, your uncle will sell you into slavery. But your daddy won't. He said, remember, the elephant is our friend. That's the matriarch. Then the cross town, they setting up the shrine of the black Madonna. Right? This became one of the most preeminent purveyors of information in the community that we never talked about. They have a branch in Detroit, and I think they got another one somewhere in Texas, in Houston or Dallas, right? So, when they showing us the story in the theatrical performance of the hip-hop culture, pay attention when they say they not like us, they not like us. Remember DMX say they don't know who we be. But just because they don't know who we be don't mean we don't know who we be. So the rhetorical directive, meaning the BS to feed us, is to tell us we from an alternate destination from the point of our origination in order to create a separation between the ones who belong here and the ones who came to replace them. So when the artist is telling you it's playing out in politics and world affairs as the invading Israeli force genetically annihilating the people that was already on the land before 1945. We got to remember the Mossad created Hamas. The CIA created ISIS under the directive of Barack Obama. Why are they doing this? They creating their own opposition in order to remind you of what they did when they came over here. Good cop, worse cop. Right? Then they play this game of grand deception to have us believing that things are other than what they actually are and the public fall for it because they're good actors. Life jackers. Sticking babies in the state pen so they can get raped and turned out by some grown-ass men. The wrong that they in deserves hell's full fury, black mass execution without jury. <clears throat> so, um, Manuel Noriega was the head of state. Remember this, because when they go into Israel, this is a, they gonna cry foul, but they done it to Noriega. There's no way that they would have came over here and got, at the time, I think it was George Herbert Walker Bush 
for his criminal activities in collusion with the same person that he authorized the military to go get. Then he end up in Europe and they go through this long extradition thing. But what they don't tell you is this. Manuel Noriega was an ally to the United States. And Bush, um, as the former director of the CIA, had already slid up under them in the 70s to finance them to come to power. Because they was trying to prevent a repeat of the Cuban Revolution. They all told us this, but we wasn't paying attention. And now I point it out, you can go back and review it. The government is not supposed to engage in criminal activities. They're not supposed to run a criminal enterprise solely for the purpose of trapping the individual up in the criminal enterprise. But this is exactly what they done under Cointel Pro. Uh, Noriega's co-defendants was George Herbert Walker Bush, Ronald Wilson Reagan, Oliver North, and I forget it was a, another guy. His, he had a goofy name like Doofendiger or something. But they was all co-defendants. Now watch this for Honor Among Thieves. When the Iran Contra blew up out of L.A. behind the Ricky Ross investigation, right? Because the government was running the criminal enterprise because Ricky Ross was also these niggas co-defendant. A lot of y'all don't know this because they wasn't tried at the same time in the same venue, in the same court. Noriega was tried in absentia while he was running from the military assassination squads who would rather have executed him than brought him in to stand trial. Noriega trial was sealed for a long time. I don't even know if it's been released because it came out in his trial that he was working in concert with George Herbert Walker Bush, Ronald Wilson Reagan, Oliver North, the DEA and Central Intelligence and the guns for um the guns for hostages Iran portion of the Iran Contra scandal. So while they doing this, this is supposed to be the government of the people, for the people and by the people, but they doing everything to put people in peril. If if the things that this government was doing to other countries, if other countries attempted to do the same thing back to this country, this government that's actually a corporation masquerading as a government would have blew their ass off the map. They didn't want individuals to become self-sufficient, especially the original um, tribes of the lands wherever we were. Whether we was in Jamaica, Barbados, St. Lucia, St. Croix, Haiti, Dominica. They turned us against each other. We're infiltrators that look like us. That's not us. They, slid, they slide in because they speak the language of the side they infiltrating, but they operating with the same mission directive as the infiltrator speaking the language of the other side that they infiltrate. We was unaware at the earliest stages of this that when we kept failing at all of our efforts to pull ourselves up by our bootstraps, that it was some people that look like us that keep stealing our goddamn boots and pointing to somebody that don't look like us, screaming thief. 
And they the ones told the people that don't look like us to stand right here and I'll be right back. So when we all come out, they concealing our boots in a duffel bag, but they pointing to the pale face they got standing at the post on the corner screaming, stop thief. So now we are mad at the wrong MFs. We mad at the wrong people. Look, if you go back to Denmark Vasey, he was told on by somebody that looked like us. If you go to Gabrielle Prosser, he was told on by somebody that looked like us. If you go and read the story of Nat Turner, fictional or not, in the story of Nat Turner, he was told on by somebody that looked like us. Prince Hall was working as an apprentice to a traveling man. What that means in layman's terms is his boss was a Freemason. And as an apprentice, he began to observe, this is my shit. Why is this motherfucker doing my shit and using it against me? So he said, okay, tit for tat, you knocked me, motherfucker, I'm going to knock you back. Now remember, Prince Hall is establishing the Blue Lodge Fraternal Brotherhood in the community of people that look like us. So he go to get a charter. And we thought that the people he went to get the charter from that was hiding in Philadelphia and that was hiding in New Jersey that turned him down, we thought that they was pale faces. But we discover when Noble Drew Ali come around that they wasn't pale faces. So what did Prince Hall do? Prince Hall traveled to London and got a charter from the Scottish Rite, which is the Red House, Freemasonic Lodge, to authorize him because there was no Blue Lodge elders ranked high enough to give him the charter to practice under the Freemasonic protection over here that was willing to give him a chance to build uh, a brotherhood amongst us on the land. They didn't want that to happen. And this is why it's a stark difference in when the minister give the story of Hiram Abiff, he tell the pale face shriners and masons about their secret. But then he say to you so-called black masons, this ain't got nothing to do with you because you ain't got no secret to keep. The secret that was the bloody oath of the papacy, which was the 200 year George Washington, George Washington conjure, which was the agreement between Simyaza and the so-called fallen ones, it's all the same fucking agreement. Replayed in cycle after cycle after cycle until one of us figure it out that they keep playing the same game on us in our face making fun and mockery of us while they're running this game on us with all the players playing the game out openly as if they live in their life. So Noble Drew Ali said, I put all of the secret society's secrets into the public domain. 
The niggas that betrayed him that was his musty staff looked like us. That let the police, they fed him to the police because there was no resistance when they came to get him. Knowing how militant they were in that era, we don't understand it because we in a different era. That if the police would have came and got Noble Drew Ali and he was not infiltrated, it would have been war in the streets. Period. The police was not the police you see today. They was more closer to a band of rogue KKK riders on the plantations of the South than they was with this well-organized machine that takes in all ethnic groups. It was not the same. So when Noble Drew Ali was being stalked, he was being stalked by some people called Moorish Zionist Jews. We call them dirty Moors. And we know the difference between the dirty Moors and the righteous Moors. People believe because I have no mercy for the dirty Moors that that mean I don't got no love for the righteous Moors and nothing can be further from the truth. The conjure war required a catch turn for two different groups of people that looked dissimilar but they was from different stocks. They was from different backgrounds. <clears throat> the only way you can know them from us is they will sell their mama, we'll hurt you about ours. And they will sell their children, and we'll kill you about ours. Them to the easiest tests to determine the difference between them and us. They understanding the loyalty is not what our understanding of loyalty is. They think that you being disloyal if you don't tolerate they bullshit. If you don't tolerate they backbiting, they gaslighting, then you the enemy. That's not the enemy. The one that's doing the dirt, that's trying to play innocent victim while they doing the dirt. While you trying to be straight up across the board with people, they trying to swerve you, and then they think because you being kind to them that they actually found a sucker. Never knowing that they was the ones being baited in the whole time for trying to take your kindness for weakness. <clears throat> so, you don't tell everybody everything you know. Because it puts you at a disadvantage. If you want to win, you got to use strategic silence so that your silence can elicit more information than you got to tell a motherfucker something. This was wrong with relationships. The sisters think that because they've been taught this by the enemy's women, that you always got to tell a motherfucker something. You ain't got to tell a motherfucker shit. You don't owe a motherfucker a description, an explanation, a analysis, a, a correction. You don't owe nobody none of that. But you volunteer and give it under the pretense of, I got to tell a motherfucker something. You always need people to know what you're thinking. Therefore, you can't figure out why you can't advance. They know the type of person you is. They don't say loose leaks, loose lips sink ships just because it sounds slick. It's not just a catchy phrase. 
Look, this is one of the reasons I hate social media so bad. The information that I'm giving up, I don't mind giving it up to the people that want it. It's the people that don't want it, don't respect it, and can't understand it. It's above their pay grade. It's above their disciplinary study level. And they want to tell me I don't know what I'm talking about. They want me to keep giving them retarded references, a secret society brotherhood, after sorry reference of secret society brotherhood without ever acknowledging them niggas is all part of the brotherhood. I'm not supposed to acknowledge that and just continuously push these people references as if this is the actual facts when all the time they telling you these same people history is a lie agreed upon. Who agreed on this shit? I didn't write that shit, right? History is written by the victors who won. And how, what story do the victors tell to keep the ones they conquered from ever rising up, overthrowing a conqueror? They got to make them feel party to the cause. They got to make them feel patriotic. I'm not patriotic. I'm matriotic. I'm mama's boy. But I'm still my daddy's son. You got to make sure you understand that. Because just because I'm my mama's boy don't mean that I won't bounce your ass like a grown ass man supposed to if you need to be bounced. It's not personal. I don't go out looking for bullshit. But when they bring the bullshit to big mama house, I'm going to be the worst one to correct it, but I might not be the first one. I'm going to be the worst one because whatever I decide, I'm coming in on 10. And the reason I'm coming in on 10, because they only going to call me when they didn't exhausted one through nine already. And my birthday is 1110. And this video started at 1110. You do the math. Speak the truth, shame the devil, and awaken the masses. Y'all got to be able to shake free the paralysis of analysis, as Ray Hagen says. Shake from the slumber of King Goo, as Malachi wrote about. Rise up from under the 200-year challenge of George Washington, knowing exactly what side of the water you belong. Don't be offended by the ones who say they belong on the other side, because they might be right. But you don't let them tell you where you belong when you know where you belong. It's always methods to the madness, but some people get so caught up in the madness that they overlook the method. Therefore, they can't follow the process, and then they end up processed. The play on words and the witty wordplay is how they've been playing on our uh, intelligence the whole time with a legalese and double speak in the political arena. They talk in two different languages and they laughing at you because you only talk one. But then when we start talking Ebonics, they slammed an alarm and went into an all out frenzy to try to teach people in the educational system how to translate Ebonics so the slave master know if we plotting this overthrow or not. We was plotting, motherfucker, and you overthrew now. We was plotting with Ebonics and the Swahili and the Nuwapu and the, the banger's tongue, what they call your, your click lingo. We was plotting. Y'all lost. We won. Big Mama Boys is ready. Big Mama's Girls is ready. We all want to put our foot in somebody's ass, so we're starting to get impatient now. 
And we didn't been being excessively patient for an extended period of time trying to put this new world in its proper order because we not finna go up under the cabal. We not finna be part of none of them bullshit